church. The reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13, uh, page in the Bible 970. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Let's get to the scripture that we just read. And we're going to continue with our service. Um, we're going to look at uh, the end of our prayer series today with the Lord's Prayer. And while I was studying that this week um, and recognising it was also Palm Sunday, um, it got me thinking about the humanity of Christ. And I prayed a prayer this week. I, asked, I said to the Lord Jesus that it's incredible that we can communicate with the one who actually went through all this. And I don't think we can grasp that sometimes, how that we have that relationship with God through his son and we can communicate with the one that actually went all through this. And we could do that on a personal level. So something that I'm absolutely assured of and the scripture shows us is that Jesus was a man of deep prayer. We see it all the way through. And I look at events like today, like the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, which within a matter of days turns sour, and I wonder how Jesus could go through with it, how he could cope with the stress of what he was about to go through, sitting on a young colt, probably an untamed donkey, um, that was prophesied that we saw in Zechariah Zachari- 9, knowing that the crowd was going to turn on him, knowing all about what he was going to go through, I wondered what it was that gave him enough strength to do that. I think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and the anguish that he suffered. And I see that it was prayer and a cultivated intimate relationship with his father that got him through so there's a top tip for us there straight away we need to have an intimate cultivated relationship with the father through Jesus Jesus's relationship was so strong with the father that he was able to say those incredible words in the garden not my will but yours be done We see all the way through the Gospels that Jesus would go away to find solitude at different times to pray and commune with his Father. Jesus was no stranger to the crowd. But every now and then, he would take himself away, somewhere secret, somewhere private, just so that he could commune with the Father. Prayer was exceptionally important to Jesus. The disciples obviously noticed this and perhaps uh, noticed the difference between his prayer life and that of the religious leaders of the day. And they also noticed uh, the difference it made in his personal life. And because of what they saw, they wanted to pray like Jesus. So when they asked him, he gave them this model of prayer, which today we call the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew and in Luke. And some people say it should be called the Disciples' Prayer. But this is what he said. He said, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So as I've said, this prayer is known as the Lord's Prayer. Well, some people say it's the disciples' prayer. It's a prayer that Jesus taught. Um, Jesus didn't give this prayer just to be memorised and recited a given number of times. In fact, he gave this prayer to keep us from using vain repetitions. 
In the first few verses, he tells his disciples what not to do. Jesus was good at that, telling us what not to do. And it says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues at the street corners. You can imagine the Pharisees in the marketplace. Oh, Lord, with all their regalia on. And it was all for show. So Jesus reminds them not to do that. He says, truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. He says this, though, but when you pray, go into a room, close a door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions, as the heathen do. It says in some um, verses, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. In prayer, we are to pour out our hearts to God. Now, this is not saying it's wrong to pray in public, in the church. We pray in public in the church every week. Or when we're blessing the food, or seeking God's help. But what it is saying is it is wrong to pray in public if we are not in the habit of praying in private. We are doing it just for show. Like the Pharisees did. It's a complete and utter matter of the heart. The, room, uh, the word translated room here just means a private place, a private chamber maybe. It could have referred back in the day to a store chamber in the house, or in my case, a shed. I love my shed. I've got a sofa in there. I've locked it. Amanda's not allowed in, only occasionally. And I love going into that shed. It's right in the corner of the garden. I can leave the door open a little bit. I can hear the birds sing in the morning. And it's one of the best places for me to go and pray. Jesus often prayed privately. Also, Jesus didn't say, pray in these exact words. He said, this is how you should pray. Or in other versions, pray in this manner. That is, use this prayer as a pattern not necessarily as a substitute. We must remember, we must remember that God is far more interested in our hearts when we pray than he is in our words. There have been times where I've prayed and it's made no sense to me whatsoever. Stumbling, bumbling words. But God knows our hearts. He knows our deepest desires. He knows what we need more than we do sometimes. So never be afraid of coming to God in prayer and just having conversation with him. The Lord's Prayer should be understood as an example or a pattern of how to pray. It gives us the ingredients like a great tasting cake that should go into prayer. And here is how it breaks down. First of all, our Father in Heaven is teaching us straight away whom we are to address. We're addressing our Father, our Father. Jesus called God Abba Father, Abba Father. So when you pray, pray to the Father, Heavenly Father. Hallowed be your name is telling us to worship God and to praise him for who he is. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and worship. We thank you this morning. The phrase, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven, is a reminder to us that we are to pray for God's plan. God's plan in the world, God's plan in the church, God's plan in our own lives, not our own plan. We are to pray for God's will to be done. Not for our desires. It keeps us in tune with the kingdom. Praying like this keeps us in total communication with God. We call it establishing comms and keeping in comms and being in tune with the kingdom. If you're praying for God's plan, then you're going to be more in tune for the kingdom if you're just praying for yours. <clears throat> We're encouraged to ask God 
for the things we need. Give us this day our daily bread. God is so good. His provision is amazing. And he wants us to come to him and pray about our provision, for the provision of the church, for the provision of our families. Give us this day our daily bread. And then forgive us our debts. Also, if we've, if we've forgiven others, reminds us, first of all, that we need to confess our sins to God, which I have to do more than once in a day, to be honest with you, and to turn from them, and also to forgive others as, as God has forgiven us. You know, that's where the law of prayer makes it easy for us, but that's not something I always find easy. But prayer is there to help us. Prayer is there to guide us and instruct us. The conclusion of the Lord's Prayer, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, is a plea for help in achieving victory over sin. And it's also a request for protection from the attacks of the devil. Something that we pray for every morning in open door is the Lord will keep us safe, that he will keep us, that he will keep open door peaceful. And we actually pray this prayer that no one who is intent on causing any sort of mischief will come across the wall in the forecourt, that the Holy Spirit will protect us, will protect our forecourt, and even Eld Lane. We've started to extend it now into Eld Lane so that they don't have as much trouble as what they get. Now, I don't know about you, but I've got a confession straight away. I really struggle with my personal prayer life. Um, I am so easily, and you can probably understand this, I'm so easily distracted. I can sit down in my shed and go, Heavenly Father, and think, I wonder what for tea. I wonder what's for tea. Um, Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks. I wonder if QPR are playing tonight. Did they play tonight? Or was it the FA Cup? I can't remember. Uh, Lord, anyway, yeah, back to, Lord, we give you praise and thanks. And um, oh, did I send that email to Paul Clover this week? Oh, I better go and do it now. And what about those other emails? And that's my prayer life. That's how it goes. Um, so it takes me a long time to pray, as you can imagine. So I actually really enjoy praying with people at 10 o'clock in our little private room because it focuses my mind a little bit more. But something I've also done is I've broken the Lord's Prayer down into P's. So it makes it easier for me to remember. Four P's. First of all, praise. I praise God. I always give him thanks every morning, um, whether I'm feeling like it or not. I praise God. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise and thanks. I give you praise and thanks. And then plan. I think about God's plan. I pray about God's plan, how that affects my life, how he can interweave me into his plan or how he can remove me from it if I'm not doing what he wants me to. So praise and plan and then provision. Um, sometimes I pray in my little office at home and I've actually got photographs of all my family, um, grandchildren, children um, and all my family. And I, I don't just pray for my own provision, I also pray for theirs as well. I want them to be provided for spiritually as well as everything else. I pray for my lost members of my family, that God will provide for them, that they will be saved, that they will be lifted up and become Christians. And then I always finish off with pardon. That's actually my longest bit, probably, um, where I tend to get more distracted. But four Ps. Praise, plan, provision and pardon. So just as a reminder, and again, the Lord's Prayer is not a prayer we are necessarily to recite back to God over and over again. It is an example of how we should be praying. Is there anything wrong with memorising the Lord's Prayer? Of course not. Of course there's not. Sometimes, if I'm short of time, I'll say the Lord's Prayer. Is there anything wrong with praying the Lord's Prayer back to God? Not if your heart is in it and you truly mean the words you say. Prayer is all about the heart. It's positioning ourselves in front of God and saying, here I am. This is me. Warts and all. Will you accept my prayer, Lord, today? And as you come to God in prayer like that, 
then the rest, the rest will just follow through. We must remember in prayer that God is far more interested in our communicating with him and speaking from our hearts than he is in the specific words we use. Even Paul in the New Testament says, I come to you with no lofty words. I haven't got any lofty words. All I've got is Christ crucified. You know, Moses struggled with his words. I'm not very great with mine. God will, God will meet you where you are in prayer. You don't have to come to him with, oh Lord, just come to him as you are. He will meet you where you are. Philippians 4, 6-7 declares this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So just a reminder, we should be praying in secret before we pray in public. Where do you pray? Where do you pray during the day? Is there somewhere you can go? Do you pray in the morning, in the evening, during the middle of the day? It's really good to find a quiet place, even in our most busy lives, wherever that may be, whether it's a shed or the downstairs toilet, wherever that may be, where you can lock yourself away for a minute or so and just give thanks to God, to consecrate your day to God. We should be praying in secret before we pray in public. We must pray sincerely. It's got to be from the heart. It's got to be from the heart. We must pray in God's will, not our will. We must pray having a forgiving spirit towards others. That's hard, isn't it? And if we are struggling with all of that, then we can do what the disciples did. We can ask God to teach us how to pray. So many times I pray these prayers. Heavenly Father, will you help me to be a good husband today? Because I don't think I can be. Heavenly Father, will you help me to be a good worker for Colchester Baptist Church? Because without your strength, I don't think I can be. Father God, will you help me in my daily life? Because without you, I don't think I can do anything. It's recognising our needs for Jesus. It's recognising our needs that we must have help from the Holy Spirit through his Son, through the Father on a daily basis. Sometimes I ask God, Lord, will you just teach me to pray? And my last final reminder is, if you are struggling with prayer, you desperately want to, you must remember that Jesus sits at the right hand of God and he prays for you. Jesus intercesses for us. So sometimes... You know, I, I come to a point, I have done in the past, where I just could not bring myself to words. It was too difficult. But I was completely assured that my saviour was intercessing for me. I've read a few different books on prayer. I need to, because it's something I struggle with. But this is a lovely book by Andrew Murray. Okay, it's quite an old book. And it's called With Christ in the School of Prayer. And the reason I love it is it's because it's taking the prayers of Jesus. And you can't do better than to come to the school of prayer with Jesus Christ. So if anyone wants to look at that afterwards, you can feel free. But there's prayer. Prayer is for us. Prayer is for us to communicate with God. So we're in comms with him. So we're in tune with the kingdom. And that's what we're going to do now. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that we don't have to jump through any hoops uh, to come to you, um, that we don't have to have lofty words or wise words, that you will just have us as we are, that we can come to you and we can talk to you because of what Jesus has done. Father God, we thank you that we can step up boldly to the throne of grace and we can just talk to you, Father God. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you will meet every single one of us. Meet us where we are, Lord. Meet us where we are with our relationship with you. But help us, Lord, because we cannot do it ourselves, to make sure we maintain and cultivate our relationship with you. Father God, we thank you for the gift of prayer. 
We thank you that the Bible says the prayer of the righteous availeth much. It achieves an awful lot. Heavenly Father, help us to pray to you. Teach us how to pray. May we spend this week in prayer with you and pockets of the day, just in conversation with you, that your will will be done and your kingdom will come.